So welcome to the first lecture of uh, SC646, which is on distributed optimization in machine learning. So some of you may have taken courses on optimization, right? Convex optimization or maybe combinatorial optimization, integer optimization. So what is distributed optimization? So, can you give an example like do we use or at least I mean do we know of any real life instance where distributed optimization is being used? When you think of uh, Google board right G board when you are typing something right you get the next word prediction right. Now from the point of your Google let us say it has deployed a uh, I mean, neural network based model on your device right and that model pretty much is suggesting the next best word in the, I mean that needs to be auto completed. So, the learning for that right you have your own private data you, he may have his own private data and so on. So, uh, we are not sharing the data every time with Google right we also have our privacy issues as well. So, from the perspective of Google what is it doing it is collecting maybe uh, so it has a uh, global copy of a neural network it basically computes a gradient right gradient on your data on your data it accumulates those gradients averages those gradients and performs a global update for the neural network and the new new neural network with the new set of weights they get deployed to your uh, devices right and that is how you get better and better predictions every time. So, in ITB for instance uh, like they, I mean one very popular lingo is everyone uses maths right in fee maths school maths at least that that used to be the case when I was an undergrad. So, if like more students from ITB they get dispersed to different parts of the world and then they start using the I mean basically they popularize that lingo you would possibly start seeing that I mean as one of the uh, suggested words by, by Google right. But because there are so many users so many data points uh, it cannot store all the data in one place it cannot perform global update at every like every time. So, it uh, maybe it selects 60 to 70 percent of the users at a time just computes a gradient on those data points uh, update the global weights and then pushes the new set of weights and that is how it's, it works right. So, in some sense the computation uh, I mean even so the computation of at least the gradients that may happen locally in a distributed sense and it gets translated in a, you know, and then gets the weights get updated in a centralized fashion. So, this is not really if not fully distributed in the sense because there is centralized computing and distribute like uh, so there is centralized communication and distributed computing. We can also think of a scenario for instance uh, so some of you are from uh, maybe electrical engineering background. So, we have this problem called uh, economic power dispatch right uh, or let me write it economic power dispatch and in fact this is one of the problems that we are going to be looking at later uh, when we towards the second of the half of the course. So, you have a network of generators and loads. So, think of it this way. Uh, so, let me just number them in a random order. Suppose this is the network that you have right. So, generator 1 or the substation 1 or the bus 1 is connected to bus 2, 2 is connected to 4, 2 is also connected to 6, 6 is connected to 3 and so on right. So, these edges they kind of indicate the connectivities between any two substations. Now, this has gotten like I mean this particular node has got a generator let us say the cost of generation let us say this particular node ends up generating total power of P1 ok and the cost of generation it can be a quadratic cost which is of this form A1 P1 square plus B1 P1 plus C something of this form right. Likewise, generator 4 would have its own generation cost which would be proportional to P4. Okay. So, this entire network so basically if you look at individual generators these generators may be owned by different companies I mean they can be a centralized aggregator but these centralized independent system operator but they, these generators can be owned by different companies and they probably would not want to reveal what their generation coefficients are right how powerful their generator is or how economical their generator is right. So, at any time so let us say you have the total load demand which is let us say P load. And the goal is if you have 6 generators in the network you would want to ensure that P1 plus P2 plus P3, P4, P5 and P6 this should be equal to the total load demand at any time right. 
So this is one, one of the objectives that you want to meet the total net load demand, but that's not the only objective, right? From, from a global goal would be that you want to minimize the total cost of generation. So a generator should not be greedily producing, let's say, I mean, this P1, it is upper bounded by some maximum generation capacity P1 max. So it will try to produce all, the gen I mean, basically all the power required and get as much money as possible, right? Or generate as much revenue as possible. But this would not be a social goal, right? This would be a greedy goal in some sense. So the objective is from the point of view of a centralized uh, or a centralized aggregator or a social aggregator, you would want to minimize this particular cost. Okay, subject to Is this clear? I mean, there may be some constrained version of this problem. So for instance, you can also have that PI is less than or equal to some PI max that a generator cannot generate more than certain uh, generate, uh, certain value and it cannot generate anything lesser than PI main. In most cases, PI main, you can assume it to be zero. So the generation values are bit, going to be between zero and PI max. Now this is a simple quadratic optimization uh, constrained uh, quadratic optimization and easy to solve, right? So the challenge lies when these AI, BIs and CIs are not known globally, right? For instance, so generator one, I mean, it wants, to, everyone wants to solve this common problem, but without having to share their cost coefficients, AI, BIs and CIs. And how can we do that, right? So that's the question. So if I do not know about the coefficients AI, BI and CI, I am allowed to exchange certain information with my immediate neighbors. So generator 1, for instance, can ex exchange certain information uh, with generator 2 so that it gets a sense of how much it is generating and what can be its likely cost coefficients without having to estimate it. And likewise, it, can also, it will also be receiving some information from generator 2. And these edges, they may also indicate geographical uh, sort of connectivity, right? So maybe generator 2 is located close to generator 1. So it's easier to exchange information, right? With, uh, with a generator which is somewhat nearby located, whereas maybe generator 6, which is far off from generator 1, uh, it may be very difficult to communicate any kind of uh, uh, information with that. So by exchanging certain amount of information and by performing, so there is, like you can imagine, there is no centralized aggregator, right? Now we are not trying to solve this problem in a centralized fashion. We are not, we don't have the, we, we cannot access AI, BIs and CIs of, for all the generators. So we cannot solve this problem in a centralized fashion. We can only solve it locally. So everyone is doing some local optimization, but at the same time, they're exchanging certain information with their neighbors and that helps them solve this global problem. So this level of uh, uh, basically local optimization and then local communication, it is, I mean, pretty much in the purview of what we call distributed optimization or decentralized optimization. Sometimes it's called decentralized optimization in certain texts because, uh, I mean, there is, I mean, distributed optimization in most cases would also mean de uh, decentralized optimization. But sometimes people want to differentiate between the computing part and the communication part. So the computation can still be local, but the communication can be with a centralized server. So we won't call it uh, decentralized. But if, in this case, the communication is also going to happen locally with the nearest neighbors. And the computation is also happening at, uh, with the, I mean, at a local level. So you can also call it decentralized optimization. Okay, so sometimes people also call it decentralized optimization, but if you look at the earlier text, at least in the control community, uh, this would be largely referred to as uh, distributed optimization. It's distributed because information is distributed across different agents. So every generator is acting as an agent, which is trying to solve the problem locally, solve the global problem locally by having its own estimate of how much everyone is producing. And then uh, through exchange of some uh, information, it would try and uh, get to the optimal values of optimal solution of this particular problem. Is this clear? So, any any questions so far on what distributed optimization is? So, what is a uh, federated learning? Something that yeah. Uh, the information exchange is directly in terms of the coefficients, or it can be like any manner. Like, like suppose that when we sensor we estimate things, the measurements of sensors are not in the directly of the states. Right. So yeah, more or less. So 
so the idea with federated learning is let's say you have multiple servers or maybe data centers or multiple devices right let's call it d1 so what is the popular most popularly used drug algorithm for updating neural weights of a neural network gradient descent right so in gradient descent typically what what do we do weights at iteration k plus 1 is wk minus step size times the gradient of your loss function computed at wk so the loss function for this particular server would be dependent on the data that this particular server has right for this server it will be again dependent on the data that this particular server has so what may happen is maybe there is a centralized aggregator or centralized server that tells everyone what wk's are at kth iteration okay so then everyone ends up computing the gradient on their own data so that would be let's call it l1 wk why l1 because even though the loss function the mathematical form of the loss function may still be the same the data points are different right so everyone would be having a different value of the gradients so think of it as different batches when you do right so and one can put what one can potentially do is one can update the weights so these this information is in maybe uh, sort of relate to the centralized server so this is a typical centralized communication architecture right so these gradients information grid informations are communicated to the centralized server whatever information it's receiving it's simply going to add those right maybe take an average of those wk gradient l2 wk and so on right gradient l4 wk it's going to add those and going to have a centralized update like this and then the, this new set of weights will then be uh, relayed back to these uh, agents right so the gradient computation is happening uh, at a local level but then there is centralized communication uh, protocol so in federated learning what happens is like if you have i mean in this case we just have about four agents or four servers you can have thousands of such agents right and if you were to like wait for everyone's data to arrive i think it's going to, so basically it's going to take a lot of time right so instead what is done is uh, i mean you assume that the data distribution is more or less uh, iid between agents so at a time you are only going to be extracting data from let's say 50 or 60 percent of the users and going to perform an update based on the date like based on the gradients from those 50 to 60 percent of users and not wait for everyone's data to arrive and that is what federated learning is so typical federated learning is uh, somewhat closer to centralized kind of uh, optimization not so much with decentralized or the distributed optimization so but then the focus for this course will be more towards uh, de distributed or decentralized optimization because we are also kind of uh, uh, looking into issues like privacy for instance where i do not want to share any amount of data that i have with any any centralized ent uh, entity right so the other other, other aspect of distributed optimization is uh, limited required so in this case for instance uh, there is a single point of failure right so if centralized entity sort of fails there is no way to update the weights anymore in this case for instance if let's say one of the nodes fail i mean there's still a possibility that you can still try to uh, maybe i mean you have enough connectivity with other networks other other uh, agents in the network and you can still try to solve this problem as uh, i mean to optimality as much as possible so there is also some robustness associated with the distributed or decentralized optimization because there is no single point of failure in general in centralized optimization there is a single point of failure and the communication bandwidth requirement for the centralized entity is pretty large right like if you have lots of users then you would have as much communication bandwidth requirement for the centralized entity with distributed optimization communication bandwidth requirement is related to the number of uh, agents that it is connected to right so that is also another advantage of distributed optimization you're going to going to be communicating uh, locally with your neighbors only with your neighbors so in this case for instance uh, i mean the i mean it's just going to exchange information with just two neighbors right so it doesn't have like i mean the connectivity i mean it doesn't have to have bandwidth six times uh, the uh, individual bandwidths of the agents right so that is another advantage of distributed optimization uh, is this clear and why is communication important in general in distributed optimization let's say i'm trying to solve this particular problem
okay subject to x1 equal to x2 so this is same as saying that i want to solve this problem right this is the centralized version this is a distributed or the decentralized version where everyone just knows about its own xi right and but they want to ensure that towards the end everyone gets to the same value which is what the centralized optimization problem would get to is this clear now if everyone thinks greedily so for the first agent what is the optimal solution if they want to minimize let's say so for the first agent so what is the objective for the first agent x1 minus 1 whole square right so the optimal solution for the first agent is simply one right it can minimize this uh, when x1 star happens to be one okay likewise for the second agent x2 minus whole square so x2 star turns out to be 2 so their local op optimal solutions happen to be different from the global optimal solutions which in this case happens to be uh, i think so 1 2 3 4 uh, so you have 2.5 as the optimal solution okay so if you try to solve this in a global fashion 2.5 would be your optimal solution but then everyone's local op local optimal solution is different from the uh, global optimal solution and the question is what how how can you i mean basically if you have let's say if you try to solve it completely lo i mean locally without having any communication with your neighbors you are never going to arrive at the optimal solution so you need some level of connectivity between the agents so as to be able to arrive at the optimal solution for the centralized problem okay and that's when uh, the role of uh, network or the graph plays an importance so let's say you have a graph like this and depending on the connectivity so one can exchange information with two and four two can exchange with uh, one and three and so on so every time let's say one has certain value uh, let's say it, it it says my guess is that the optimal solution is going to be at one x2 would say no my guess is the optimal solution would be at two and they would try and uh, come to in some sense a consensus so they will try and arrive at a consensus so that not only they are at they are solving the global problem but their optimal solutions or the estimates of the optimal solutions they happen to be the same number right is this clear so what can be another application of this kind of problem let's say you in this i mean in this room we have four uh, acs installed right and every ac uh, every air conditioner has a set point that it needs to work with and the, every every air conditioner has got its own uh, temperature sensor so let's uh, let's look at this problem so let's say this is the connectivity that okay uh, and the temperatures are so these are the temperature measurements by the four air conditioners right so one can exchange information with two two can exchange information with three three can exchange with four and so on so you can assume that the temperature sensors are somewhat faulty okay so and you do not know the right temperature so let's say you want to estimate the temperature based on individual sensor measurement what would be a good estimate based on the four measurements that you have seen one way to uh, like let's say if, you, if the noise is uh, zero mean so then you just take the mean of all the temperatures and that would be a good estimate right so so the mean of these numbers is 24 okay but then you have a bird eye view of all the temperatures right so you can see that the temperatures are 25 20 24 and 27 and i can simply compute the mean and this becomes a centralized problem i want to be able to compute this mean but without having like so for instance one doesn't know what two three and four like one doesn't know what three and four has right one maybe can exchange information with two two can exchange information with three three can with four and four and can exchange with two suppose i were you were to design an algorithm that basically uh, estimates this using a local sort of communication what would that algorithm look like so what would one try to do 
so, so one has its own estimate which is 25. Uh, let's say one, one's current estimate is x1, x1 and two's current estimate is x2. So, how would one update its value based on what it sees from two? A very naive algorithm that you can think of. So, everyone wants to arrive at a common value, right? Which may be in this case happens to be the uh, temperature of like the mean temperature value. So, but then one cannot see what three and four have measured. It can only have information about two. Two can see what one and three have measured. 3 can see what 4 and 2 have measured and so on, right. Then the, now from 1's perspective, how does it arrive, like how does it know what, what is the average or the mean value based on what it sees from 2. So, it has to like it will start with maybe some its own estimate of what the average temperature is and then it would I mean you would try and converge to the mean value, right. Every temperature sensor or every uh, measurement unit would try and converge to the mean value. So, the question is how what would be the you know, what would be the update rule for one look like? Yeah, so something like this right. So, maybe take x1 plus x2 by 2 and assign it to x1. What about 2? So, all the neighbors. So, for 2 it would turn out to be something like x1. and that becomes your x2 ok. 3 would be uh, x2 plus x3 plus x4 and that gets assigned to x3 and then 4 would be 4 is connected to 2, 3 and 4. So, the same thing here x2 plus x3. Is this clear? So, everyone is just averaging its own belief and the belief of its uh, neighboring sensors, right. So, belief or estimates are the I mean, so I am going to use them interchangeably, but they mean the same thing. So, everyone has its own estimate of uh, what the other uh, device is measuring or basically what 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 is it measuring and what other device is measuring and they are just going to uh, average those and that becomes the update or uh, the estimate for the global average value, right. So, let us let us try and see what this uh, comes down to. So, if I write this in an algorithmic fashion. So, at iteration k plus 1 x 1 x 2 x 3 and x 4 this is at iteration k x 1 x 2 And for one, so this would be half, one half, zero, and zero, right? For two, it would be one fourth all the way. For three, it would be zero, one third, one third, one third, and for four again, it's the same thing, right? So, everyone would start with let us say in the beginning they have their own measurements 25, 20, 24 and 27. So, everyone would start with those measurements. So, that would be x, x, x1, x2, x3, x4 at iteration 0 and then they would be updating the estimates based on this. And the hope is that it converges to their average value which is 24, right. This is the uh, most usual thing to do, right or most naive thing to do when you want to arrive at the consensus value or when you want to in, in establish a consensus between different devices. So, let us see uh, how this particular. So, by the way, if I look at this uh, particular matrix. So, this matrix has 0 entries whenever there is not whenever there is not an edge between two agents right. Otherwise, it has certain uh, values. Uh, so, in this case this edge from 1 to 2 uh, it has a value 1 to itself it has a value of half and then 1 to 2 it again has a value of half right. So, you can relate this to something called adjacency matrix of a graph and that is something that again that we are going to look into in the later half of the course. So, your algorithm is x k plus 1 in the vector form is a times x k 
where A happens to be the adjacency matrix and it has this particular form. Is this clear? So let us see what this uh, like if you run this algorithm what this converges to. So these are the 4 temperature measurements. So 25, 20 and 24 and 27. So these are the individual temperature measurements right. And A1 is our uh, adjacency matrix. So which was 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0 is what we started with. And then all 1 fourth, then 0, 1 third, 1 third and then the same thing right. And then we run this for 20 iterations and let us see what and what it produces. So all we are doing is we are like our new x is basically a times x right xk plus 1 is a times xk and that is a new value that we are again going to be updating. So it is a simple update it is a local update because one for instance in this case one just uses information from itself and its neighbor and likewise every agent is using information from itself and its neighbor. So this is fine and if you look at what this algorithm produces after 20 iterations so it has converged so that is a good thing it has arrived at a consensus. So the, all the sensors are in consensus but instead of con, uh, basically converging to 24 which is what was desired uh, which it has I mean converged to a number which is maybe 23.58 something right every every sensor has converged to 23.58 even though we wanted to arrive at a value which is 24. So we wanted to arrive at an average consensus and not so we did not just want to ensure that there was there is consensus among this uh, devices we want to ensure that there is consensus there is average consensus between the devices. So that means the value has converged to the average of all these sensors right and that has not happened. Is this clear? So now I am going to choose slightly different form of adjacency matrix the connectivity still remains the same the graph connectivity it is so again one is not going to be exchanging any information with 3 and 4 but then instead of using half and half. I am giving more emphasis like in this case 3 fourth to like to 1 from the point perspective of 1 it is going to assign a larger weight which is 3 fourth to itself and a smaller weight to its uh, uh, neighbor which is 1 fourth right. So it, this time it still adds up to 1 right 3 fourth 1 fourth still adds up to 1 all 1 fourth for the second one then you have 1 fourth 5 twelfth and 1 third which again adds to 1 uh, but then we are using a different weighting scheme now. All the communication is still going to be uh, local there is no like for instance 3 was not connected to 1 so there is not, not going to be any update like when, when updating 3 there is not going to be any information exchange from 3 to 1 and likewise for the fourth is this clear. So let us run this uh, and with the same initialization 25, 20, 24 and 27 you can see now it has con every everyone has converged to uh, the same number so 23.9989 is roughly 24 so 24 24 and all so all all the sensors or all the devices have converged to the same estimate and which this estimate also happens to be the average consensus value that we wanted the devices to converge to so it really depends on what kind of adjacency matrix that we end up choosing that would guarantee not just consensus but average consensus and that is again something that we are going to look into uh, in the later half of the course. Is this clear? So much of distributed optimization is not just about optimization. Optimization is something that you would have uh, studied in other courses convex optimization, integer optimization and so on. Like when, when you have uh, when you do not have the centralized or the global information available how do you still guarantee uh, uh, convergence to the global optimal solution when you are exchanging lo information locally with your neighbor. So, this is what this particular course is all about. The other aspect of this course uh, and that is more related to uh, the recent developments in, uh, in this area is uh, actually uh, on accelerated optimization. So remember the problem on economic dispatch uh, where we talked about meeting the load demand at each time point. Now that we know that the load fluctuates with our usage right. So every 10 to 15 minutes uh, maybe it, it gets a little hot so if someone would turn on the AC so there is a sudden load demand right or maybe someone like using a like someone has a swimming pool at their home and they want to heat up the water. So there will be a sudden uh, uh, increase in load demand and so on right so it varies with time. Now the question is like if you end up spending a lot of time in solving the optimization problem by the time you try to meet that particular load demand the load the demand point has already shifted and whatever you have produced may not be valid for the future time points right. So you want to be able to solve the optimization problem rather quickly so you want to have faster convergence guarantees. And that is where uh, the first half of the course which is going to be focused more towards accelerated optimization algorithms. 
So optimization algorithms is something that you have already seen, but we are going to look at ways through which we can uh, accelerate the process of uh, at arriving at the optimal solution. So we would still be starting with the single uh, agent uh, centralized optimization and that would be uh, pretty much the first half of the course. In the second half is when we are going to move to distributed optimization where we would also need, uh, read uh, some basics on graph theory and then move to uh, designing algorithms which basically solve problems like economic dispatch. Is this clear?